Okay, it's time to finally repair the broken USB ports on this EVGA SR3 Dark motherboard. A very common issue that occurs on these modern motherboards is that the USB ports, mainly the Intel ones, they get damaged or they just stop working after some time, especially if you use the motherboard ever on Sub-Zero cooling. I mean, uh, the CPU on the motherboard, I mean. But it doesn't have to be run below zero. It can occur even just uh, like in normal use. If you just use air or water cooling on the CPU, it can still happen. It's a very common issue among, among these uh, modern motherboards since the uh, launch of Z87 or Z97 chipset. Uh, before that, the uh, motherboards always used different type of the fuses at the USB port, so they never had this issue that the fuses just get blown. So, uh, for example, my Rampage Extreme, Rampage Free Black Edition, like the motherboards from like 2008-2010 era, they don't have this issue at all. It starts with the Z87 or Z97 motherboards. For example, I returned my ASRock Z97 OC formula at least twice because of this uh, USB issue. Now when thinking about it uh, in uh, 2020, 2021, uh, that was a mistake because it's very easy to fix those uh, broken USB ports. So that's what we will be doing today. So uh, there are two ways of doing this. So you can either uh, short the blown fuses so that it will uh, work without a fuse at all. Or if you have uh, uh, knowledge about BIOS modding, you can um, try to modify the BIOS that can bypass the blown USB fuse issue. But it's much easier to just short the fuses. So I will show you what happens. So now if I turn on the power supply switch, the PS2 keyboard is connected to the lower port uh, of the first USB ports at the rear I.O. The uh, lights on the PS2 keyboard just blink constantly and it will not work if I try to turn on the system. And if I switch the port from one of the Intel ones to another, like to the second row, it just quickly blinked, blinked and there's no light at all. So the only port that had like partial, that was partially working was this particular port over here. But the only USB port that still works uh, is the uh, a USB 3.1 type A port that's between the clear CMOS button and the 7.1 audio. It works because it's connected to a third party AS Media uh, controller instead of the Intel uh, chipset. So if I put that in to the AS Media port, look, no blinking whatsoever and there's just constant light. So that port works just fine. So the issue is on the Intel ports as it always was. So uh, what we will be doing today is that I will just uh, disassemble the cooling uh, solution over, over here and uh, there should be eight blown fuses uh, in total behind the Intel ports because there are eight Intel USB 3.0 ports, like one fuse per port. We will just uh, check the resistance of each fuse. They should all be like infinite, like no resistance at all or just infinite. A working fuse should have uh, next to zero resistance. So what we will do is that we will just short the both sides of each fuse together with solder. So uh, that all that's of course not completely risk-free. So if you decide to do that, I would not charge any USB device from those ports. Like I wouldn't charge like a mobile phone or similar from those ports. It's only to make the motherboard working again so that you can actually use it. Like you can use your mouse properly, take some stuff out from uh, like USB keys and so on. That's only what why, we'll, why we are fixing that issue. So uh, as this happens so often, I really don't care about returning any motherboard anymore because of this issue. It happens with almost every motherboard that I have nowadays. Well, the X299 Dark and the Z390 Dark or the Z490 Dark, I never had that issue with those. I've had it always with like the Maximus 9 Apex, the OC Formula boards from ASRock. Now this one, the SR3 Dark from EVGA, was the first EVGA motherboard that I had the issue with. So it really depends on the motherboard model a little bit as well. But yeah, but it's very common. So uh, if you have uh, faced this issue, 
just follow these steps. If you just return the motherboard and you get a new one, it's very possible that you get the same issue uh, yet again. So uh, let's just disassemble the cooling solution and I will uh, do the actual soldering of camera because it, because it's quite hard to show you. But we can check the uh, end result after that and I will see if I can show you the actual fuses before shorting them out. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here's the I.O. area of the SR3 Dark, now with the heatsink removed. So uh, uh, I have a multimeter over here, but I cannot really show you the actual uh, resistances on camera because I don't have a third hand. But here are the damaged fuses. So uh, these two over here, so this one and this one, they are the fuses of the first two USB ports. The first one has an infinite resistance like mega ohms level and so on and the second one has a resistance of like 500 something ohms and that's why it's partially working. But the first one, the higher one, is completely dead. And the fuses of the other Intel ports over here, so these two, these two, and these two, they are completely infinite as well. That's why they are not working. Here is the USB fuse of the AS Media port. So the large P260 uh, marked one between the two caps over here. It has a resistance of uh, 0.4 ohms across it. That's why it's working. So that's like a good reference. So when a fuse is working as it should, it should have a resistance that is next to uh, like zero. So uh, that's why the Intel, that's why the AS Media port always works. The problem is always tied to the Intel USB ports only. And in the future, once we get this fixed, we can use the AS Media port to charge a device if we have to charge something or to take stuff out from a USB key and so on. We only want to fix these Intel USB 3.0 ports so that we can use like a USB mouse and keyboard. Because now we have to use this single USB port for everything and that's a very big issue. So uh, I will just short the sides together of each of these fuses and then they should have a resistance that is next to zero once again and they should work just fine. It's very hard to do on camera because these are quite tight spots so I will just do that off camera and then we can just look at the finished uh, result uh, together. Okay, that's a quite quick and dirty job, but I think it should do the trick. So I just used like a solar bridge across all of the uh, broken fuses. So uh, I think you could even use like uh, liquid, uh, liquid metal, but uh, just be sure that if you use liquid metal that it doesn't slip onto any of the uh, neighboring components. So uh, I only use solder so there's no like wire or any uh, piece of metal between uh, each side of the fuse. So uh, just enough solder so that it can form a bridge or so. So two, four, six and eight. I didn't touch the AS Media one because there's no need, it works. So I will just put the heating back on now and we can see if it works and I'm pretty sure it should work. But again, do not charge any device from these uh, ports now as they don't have a fuse anymore. I think you could even find these fuses somewhere from Asia, like from those Chinese websites, if you really wanted to swap them. But uh, then there's again just a risk that it will happen again. So easier to just do it like this way and it should work. But yeah, so let's see if it works as it should. Okay, and now the keyboard and mouse is connected uh, in the first two USB ports. So uh, it'll be hard to see because it's quite dark, but it doesn't matter. So turn on the power supply switch. But already we can see that it's it's working completely well, so uh, it should work just fine. We can already see it in the BIOS, I think. So yeah, keyboard is working fully and so is the mouse. So yeah, so uh, 
definitely you can do this but remember uh, you are doing this on your own responsibility so anything can always happen so just be sure that none of the other components next to those fuses are being short to ground so, so just be careful that's why it may be safer to use solder instead of liquid metal but that's all up to you so definitely use this as a guide if you have a motherboard a modern motherboard no matter which platform that has the same issue that the uh, USB ports that used to work aren't working anymore or they are giving uh, some errors in uh, Windows that uh, there's a power surge on a USB port or something like this or it's just going constantly on and off like Windows is giving the uh, sound that the USB device is being recognized and then it goes off then back on and back off you get the idea so uh, I hope you like to see this guide and uh, yeah, just use it to your advantage if you have a motherboard like this that needs a USB port repair. But, but other than that, thanks for watching once again, and I will see you on the next one.